Hey everybody, Ash here with Gen Sense, and today I'm coming at you with my favorite fragrance pickups of 2018. This isn't set up like a top 10 list, it's just the fragrances that I'm most glad that I picked up, and a lot of these are ones that I picked up most recently. So maybe there's some recency bias there, but I don't think so. I've got a lot of fragrances to talk about, so let's go ahead and jump into this. And before I actually talk about the fragrances that I'm most glad that I picked up, I'm gonna do sort of an unboxing. I usually don't do unboxings. I actually don't think I've ever done an unboxing on this channel. But I got two fragrances in today, so let's rip into these packages and see what they are. So this first one is a pickup from eBay. They shipped it just in this uh, priority small flat rate box. Try not to chop my hand off. Oh. So, there we go. It comes wrapped in a newspaper. In case anybody is interested, it looks like Albertsons has uh, two palm juices for $4. Get on that deal. And then some bubble wrap. So, oh, this one I bought unboxed, so it's not gonna have a tester box or an actual box or anything like that. This is one of my discontinued pickups. So I like to pick up discontinued fragrances every once in a while. There we go. Missoni Olympias. There it is, check that bad boy out. Missoni Olympios. I'm pretty sure that this was released in 94. 1994, not 1894. Oh, yeah, it's got that old school atomizer. Take a look at that. Yeah, and then that old school tube. Let's go ahead and spray this one on. Oh boy, fire hose kind of atomizer. It didn't really distribute much, just kind of like a squirt gun. Ah, ah. So for those of you that are unaware, this fragrance is known as a, an alternative to vintage Dior Fahrenheit. It smells good, it does. Maybe not as powerful as old school Fahrenheit, but it's close, just first impression. Uh, it's kind of like in the same family as Dior Fahrenheit, I would say. Good though, I'm glad I got that. Next up is from La Belle Perfumes. Let's go ahead and get this one done. Oops. Packaging, and here it is. It is a uh, new Isimiyaki. Lo Super Major DC. I guess let's go ahead and open this up. I got the 3.3 ounce, 100 ml size bottle. I actually reviewed the uh, original one. So that is on my channel. Uh, it was just Lo Major DC, but now it's Lo Super. Major DC. So that's when you take it up a notch, when you just go from a regular fragrance to a super fragrance. So let's go ahead and give this one a spray too. My atomizer looks like it's seen better days. It's a little bit cocked to the side and has kind of a scratch. All right, let's let that marinate for a second. If you like Lo Major DC, you'll like that one. Uh, so it smells aquatic. It smells like there's an overload of uh, cashmere like cashmere wood, that note that gets thrown around where it's just kind of, you know, <laughs> it's just like a synthetic, fuzzy, kind of uh, warm note. It's okay. I'll probably review that in the not too distant future, maybe give it some more proper wearings. All right, enough of all that. Let's do these favorite fragrances. All right, so the first fragrance that I wanna bring up, one of my favorites of the year, it's one that I've talked about a lot lately. I've talked about it a lot this year in general, so I don't wanna go into too much detail on it, but it is this one, Lunarosa Black by Prada. Tonka, Amber, Angelica, Bergamot, some of the notes here, and like I've said in the past numerous times, Lunarosa Black, just all about the Tonka and the Amber. Those two notes meld together to make kind of a creamy, rich, warm, sweet, sexy fragrance. Great for cooler weather, great for nighttime wear, great for compliments. Luna Rosa Black is a little bit like you took Luna Rosa Sport, Midnight in Paris by Van Cleef and Arpels, and Bulgari Black, took bits from each one of those fragrances, put it into a blender, mixed it up, and then this is what you would get. As of right now, that is my favorite release in the entire Luna Rosa line, which is saying something because I really like Prada, and I really like the Luna Rosa line. Great bottle, great compliment getter, great fragrance, just a great release. One of my favorite pickups of the year, Luna Rosa Black. Up next is a niche fragrance, one of only a couple of niche fragrances on this list slash video. This is from the house of the Merchant of Venice. It is Arabesque. 
tobacco, cinnamon, plum, and tonka are some of the notes in this fragrance. And The Merchant of Venice is a house that I thought I really wouldn't be able to get anything from for the longest time. I had been eyeballing a lot of their fragrances, but they were only really available in Europe and shipping from European websites now is just out of control for fragrances. Legitimately on a lot of these websites, shipping for one fragrance is $70 or more. There was a time that you could get fragrances from Europe for a lot less than that, but nowadays, it's a no-go. Oh, and by the way, I do have a head cold, so I apologize if I sound all stuffy or whatever. So yeah, Merchant of Venice, it was a house I'd wanted to experience for a really long time. I just love the bottles for whatever reason, the design just really speaks to me, I guess you could say. And this year I was able to pick up four of their fragrances because they started to show up at some American discounters. And that's where I got this one. It opens up syrupy sweet with a mix of plum, tonka, ginger, and cinnamon. It comes across almost a little bit boozy. And in the dry down, Arabesque starts to resemble Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille, as tobacco comes out more in this fragrance. Only it's mixed with a little bit of that plum and cinnamon. Arabesque has solid projection, solid longevity, and is a great fragrance for cool weather in fall and winter. This one makes the list because I was just so excited to get a Merchant of Venice fragrance. I have gotten some use out of this already this year, even though I haven't really talked about it all that much. And hopefully I'll get some more of these fragrances in the near future and maybe I can do a little more coverage on the Merchant of Venice. It's just, I imagine a lot of you out there probably are not going to be too interested if it's nearly impossible to get a hold of a bottle without paying through the nose. Either way, one of my favorite pickups of the year, Merchant of Venice Arabesque. Next up is a Super Cheapy. Uh, that's really one of the main reasons that I made the list. It's one that my wife likes a lot, one that I've gotten some use out of in the uh, warmer weather. It's a fragrance that I reviewed earlier this year. It is Lacoste Loam. Orange, rhubarb, ginger, and almond. Some of the notes here. So yeah, like I said, I reviewed that earlier in the year. My wife really, really likes it. Good for warm weather, good for spring, good for summer. You could wear it in fall too. And it's a great bang for your buck because you can get this for under $25 on discounters now. Uh, a 50 ml bottle for under $25. This is a 100 ml, so that will be just a little bit more expensive. Opens up with a big blast of citrus and rhubarb, which is a note that you don't see all that often. Then in the dry down, it's got some spiciness and sweetness. This is not a fragrance that is groundbreaking. It's not a fragrance that reinvents the wheel. It doesn't do anything new. It's just very pleasant and affordable. I said this in the review, but it smells a little bit like you take parts from Yves Saint Laurent Lome and Dolce & Gabbana the One, and put it together. And then you've got this one. It's a solid everyday casual wear type of fragrance that's gonna work in almost any situation other than really cold weather. Just a solid pickup for next to nothing. That's why it makes the list Lacoste Loam. Next up, we're gonna go with a couple of darker fragrances that I picked up this year. Actually, they're ones I picked up really, really recently. First up, Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum. Vanilla, Tolu Balsam, Oris, and Patchouli, some of the notes. And this is a fragrance that I smelled much, much earlier in the year. I smelled it when I was in Atlanta, when I was down there to see the Cubs play the Braves, and I really, really liked it. I wanted to buy it right away, but I was patient, and I waited until I could pick it up from a discounter. And if I'm honest with you guys, I actually had a moratorium from about April through to maybe October, where I didn't really buy anything at all. So this year I actually purchased much, much less than you might think. Gentleman opens up sweet and powdery. Iris and vanilla are two of the main notes right off the bat. And this is a fragrance that gets compared to uh, Valentino Womo Intense and Your Ohm Intense. And while none of those fragrances are the same, they do all share an iris note. So there is that similarity that all three of those fragrances share. Gentleman to me is on the sweet side. There's a considerable amount of vanilla, which mixes with resinous sweetness and a little bit of spice in the dry down. And to an extent, this does feel like Givenchy's kind of foray into the sophisticated man's night out fragrance, if you want to call it that. So in that sense, it is similar to Valentino Womo Intense and Your Ohm Intense, because obviously Valentino Womo Intense takes iris and is made for the sophisticated refined man to wear, uh, you know, to formal gatherings or out on the town. Dior Ohm Intense, same thing for Dior. And with this fragrance being called Gentleman and being an Eau de Parfum, it's basically just this fragrance house's take on uh, that type of fragrance. That's the kind of niche that they're trying to fit in with this fragrance, at least in my opinion. So in that sense, they just took that iris that is kind of well known for being used in those situations at this point and repurposed it into their own take on that type of fragrance. Maybe at some point in the future, I'll take Gentleman, Eau de Parfum, Valentino Womo Intense, Duro Intense, pit them against each other 
and see how they rank out. Regardless of all that though, I do really, 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 really like the way that this one smells and that's why it makes this list. That's gonna seg into the next fragrance, which is another one that I really, really wanted, and I'm glad I finally picked it up, even though it was right at the end of the year. It is this one, Ferragamo Womo Signature. I have already filmed a review for this one, so that will be out very soon. Tonka Leather Coffee, some of the main notes here. I really, really liked Salvatore Ferragamo Womo, the original, that came out in 2016. This, in my opinion, improves every facet of that fragrance. Womo 2016 is most well known for having a tiramisu note, which is really, really sweet. To some people, it's too sweet. Womo Signature takes that tiramisu note, gets rid of it, and replaces it with coffee and leather. So what does that mean? It means that Womo Signature is darker, more mature, a little bit less sweet, and just a better fragrance overall. Womo Casual Life is the first flanker to Salvatore Ferragamo Womo. That one was okay. Uh, it's just a, a pleasant daytime spring and summer fragrance. It didn't blow me away, but it smelled all right. Womo Signature though, totally different beast. Fantastic fragrance. Womo Signature, love the bottle, love the fragrance. Uh, I did wait toward close to the end of the year to pick that one up, but since I picked it up technically in 2018, it makes the list. Next up, an entirely different kind of pickup altogether. Uh, this one is just really, really old school fragrance slash aftershave. And the reason that I'm so glad I picked it up is just mainly because of the retro factor. It's this one, High Karate, and also High Karate Oriental Lime, and also High Karate Oriental Spice. So this is an old school aftershave that originally came out in 1967. I'm not sure exactly how old this bottle is. It's uh, from Pfizer, but the batch code looks like uh, 4i8a. Not the easiest thing to see. Nice, you just gotta get that and really slather on that aftershave, you know? Bring back that retro 60s feel. And like I showed you guys, I got the triple combo, so I can go old school in any situation. I got a really good deal on these bottles. I would not pay the price that they're currently going for on eBay. Uh, they're not the cheapest thing on earth to pick up. And back when these were released, they actually came with a little pamphlet that taught you different karate moves. That way you could fight off all the hot ladies that were gonna try to get up on you when they smelled that high karate emanating off of your freshly shaved face or your manly hairy chest. High karate also had some of the best completely cheesy and terrible commercials that played on TV back in the day. This is high karate's top secret lime orchard where high karate's cracked botanists have developed the only lime big enough and powerful enough to go into high karate oriental lime after shave. High Karate Oriental Lime, with indispensable instructions on self-defense in every package. High Karate Oriental Lime. Be careful how you use it. Typically featuring a nerdy guy having to fight off all kinds of women who found him irresistible, again because of that sick High Karate scent. Really, I got these just because of how retro they are and how inherently awesome they are. Super psyched about these. High Karate. I've actually thought about doing a High Karate review, maybe where I go ahead and get a Karate Gi, just get completely karate up. I should probably just douse myself in this, throw on a Karate Gi, and walk around town asking women how good I smell. I'm sure that'll turn out great. Next up, Jean-Franco Fair, In the Mood for Love. Pepper Cardamom Lavender Tonka, some of the main notes here. And perhaps this is not a hyper unique fragrance, but it does smell very, very pleasant. It's a fresh, spicy, sweet fragrance with a lavender, pepper, and citrus opening, and a slightly sweet woodsy dry down with touches of cardamom. Something that's easily worn, it's mass appealing, it does smell very nice, uh, but the main reason that I bought this fragrance is because of the name, In the Mood for Love. Uh, you might think that that's very cheesy, and I wouldn't really blame you if you thought that. Uh, most of you are unaware though that I'm a huge Asian cinema fan, especially movies originating from Hong Kong, Japan, and South Korea. And In the Mood for Love is a film that was written and directed by Wong Kar Wai. And it stars one of my absolute favorite actors of all time, Tony Leung. When I was going to college, I actually wrote an entire essay on Wong Kar Wai's film Chongqing Express. So it's something that I'm a little bit passionate about, you could say. And because of the shared names between the film and the fragrance, I had to pick this one up. 
And I'm actually really glad that I did because this used to go for a very small amount on eBay. It was one of the more affordable discontinued fragrances. You could pick bottles up for around $25. And I checked before doing this video, and I can only find one of these, as of this filming, that's being sold in America, and it's going for, I think, around $80. There are still some bottles that are in Europe being sold that you can have shipped here, uh, but this is not as easily well found as it was when I picked this up originally. So that's why I'm featuring this one today, mainly just my love of Asian cinema in the mood for love. Next up, a fragrance from Fortin Manly, which is a house that I'm really impressed by. I hope that I can smell more of these in the future and pick some more bottles up. This one is Suleiman Le Magnifique. And I absolutely love the metal plaques on the front of the Fortin Manly fragrances. I think they just look fantastic. This is just a wonderful, high quality fragrance, very resinous and sweet. It has notes of uh, amber, ambergris, apple, and cinnamon, among others. And when you hear cinnamon and apple, uh, maybe the first thing that pops into your mind is apple pie or Hugo Boss bottled, but it smells absolutely nothing like that. In the absolute simplest of terms, it's a warm, spicy, sweet amber fragrance with a lot of resins in the backbone. It has an intriguing blend of notes where everything is working together. You don't have one singular note that kind of stands out and detracts from the whole of the fragrance. And this is a fragrance and a house that I've considered covering more. So maybe this coming year, you'll see a review on this one or others from the house. Another Fortin Manly fragrance that I liked a lot is Amber Absolutely. I put that in my niche top 10 winner list. So if you want to, you could say this one and Amber Absolutely together. Fantastic pickup, psyched to have that. Uh, last up, let's go ahead and include this one, Sun Drunk from Imaginary Authors. The notes are right on the back. Neroli rhubarb, honeysuckle, rose water, orange zest, and first kiss. This one I would like to review, but we're kind of right in the throes of winter, and this is not a winter fragrance. So I'll probably hold off on that review until at least spring. Everybody here knows I love imaginary author's fragrances. It's kind of obvious. This one smells fantastic off the opening. It's almost like a rhubarb citrus fruit drink. It smells fantastic. I'll definitely do a full review on this in the future. Imaginary Authors fragrances are ones that I always get really hyped about. I like the backstory that they put into each fragrance. I like that they have imaginary notes that kind of help draw you into what the, uh, the fragrance is trying to put across. Imaginary Authors is just a wonderful indie house, one of my absolute favorites, and they recently started doing scented candles. So I might go ahead and pick one of those up. Uh, one of the scented candles that they have is called The Abandoned Mansion. It'd be kind of cool if they made that into a fragrance. It's probably something that not everybody would agree with me on, but the idea of having a fragrance that smells like an abandoned mansion to me is pretty dope. I would buy that. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for some of my favorite pickups of 2018. It's entirely possible that I'm forgetting about something that I picked up this last year that I really, really love. Uh, but it's kind of hard to, to go through everything and remember every single purchase you did and try to whittle that down to your favorites. So if I've forgotten something, please forgive me. All right, guys, let me know in the comments some of your favorite pickups this year. And uh, let's look forward to a successful and healthy 2019. I'll see you guys next time.